Thanks for joining this week's episodes of Dark Horse Creations uh, Fire Pit. Um, this week we're going to talk about fractal burning. If you don't know what fractal burning is, um, you could always Google it, but I'm going to explain to you today on how I put together my machine to be able to burn grooves inside of slabs of wood. Um, I did this one earlier today on TikTok Live. A lot of you guys might know me from there. And a lot of you guys have requested me on making my machine. And that's what I'm gonna go over today. And I'm gonna go over some of, some things that you need for safety as well, if you decide to make this venture. Um, first thing you need is rubber gloves. It is a necessity. If you get shocked by this, it is very dangerous. It could possibly take your life, and we don't want that. Um, I'm just gonna show you what I use off of videos that I have watched. I'm not saying this is safe by any manner and I'm not trying to promote it in any ways. I'm just going to show you how I built my machine for me to be able to do this. Um, I also have a fire extinguisher. That way when I am fractal burning, um, if the wood catches on fire, I have this. And I also make sure that I'm in a heavily ventilated area. I don't. I work in my garage, as you may see. It is a two-car garage. My bedroom and my daughter's bedroom and one of my son's bedrooms is right above us. Um, I would hate for the smoke to go up in there and for them to get hurt by any means by the fumes. So I make sure that I actually do all my fractal burning outside. Um, and also, don't do it in the rain either. That is, if you watched my live yesterday on TikTok, that is one thing that I made sure I shut down. As soon as it started raining, I packed it up and I stopped fractal burning. It is 10,000 volts that could go through your body and you want to mitigate anything possible for that of happening. So with that being said, this is my machine. Um, it is actually the power source of a microwave. If I'll get my cameraman to come down here and Basically, I destroyed a microwave, took out the power source to it, and even have the cable right here to plug it into an outlet or an extension cord. Um, the way I have it built, I have it put on a piece of wood and then also a, a plastic lid, and I have the entire component screwed into it as well. For the power cable, this is, the black wire is the negative wire and the white wire is the, uh, the hot wire. The green wire, I just cut off. That is a ground wire. You don't need it. Um, but I have it connected and soldered to both of these connectors. One, the negative wire on this side, and then the positive wire on this side. Um, it is soldered on there. Um, one thing that I would probably do in the future is put some heat shrink wrap on here. Um, if you hear a lot of the noise in the background, it's my, cape, my eight gauge cable is moving around uh, so I do apologize for all the noise um, I would take some heat shrink wrap and put it on here that way it protects it a lot more and would also protect me but you know and then when it comes to the actual wires I consulted an electrician before I bought this 8 gauge wire and the reason why I'm saying that is if you go to Home Depot or your local uh, hardware store and you say, I need eight gauge wire, they're just gonna hand you your everyday turn of the mill eight gauge wire. This particular wire will allow 10,000 volts to go through it to, compared to a normal wire that will not. And that could cause fires. Um, you could definitely get the higher chances of electri electrocution off of that. So I consulted an electrician before I bought all of this stuff to make sure I was using proper wires and I could eliminate possibly hurting myself or my family. Um, so contact your local electrician. They should be able to give you some guidance if they don't contact a different one. A lot of them are very friendly. They like talking about this stuff. When I brought this up to him on what I was doing, he told me to bring my the wood buy later on because he was definitely interested in seeing this. He's never heard of it or anything like that. So you can make a lot of good connections that way as well. 
Um, but the way I have this eight gauge wire running on one side of this, there is a prong that sticks off of this converter right here. Um, I have a clip that is tied onto the red cable right here. And then I, of course I have electrical tape, um, but heat shrink would probably work a lot better. And then I have it going down here, tied into this eight gauge wire. The reason why I did this, to be honest with you, I don't know. I've seen it on a YouTube video. I studied this for almost six months before I actually wanted to take on the challenge of building this. And so I watched a lot of YouTube videos, but I could never get the right answers to it. And then I came across one and this guy built one out of a toolbox. I wish I knew his name because I would definitely give him a shout out on this because I built this one just like he built his, but his is in a black Husky toolbox and I think it's awesome. He can carry it anywhere and, and do it anywhere. So maybe I'll do that in the future. But he had his going off just like this one. The eight gauge, eight gauge wire is roughly four to five foot long and I have it ran through this polypropylene um, pipe. Fun fact about polypropylene pipe that I didn't know about when I went to find it, it only comes in 150 foot rolls. So I have 146 feet of this laying around my house. Um, I might build more machines later on in time, you never know. But I have the eight gauge wire running through it and then I have it looped around. And if you come in closer, I have a hole drilled through this poly pipe and a 60D nail going through it. I am going to find a way to secure this better. That way I don't have such big of a loop of the wire right there. Um, I can foresee it being a cause of electricity jumping from place to place, but I'm not sure. But it's just one of the factors that I want to play into this to make it as safe as possible. And then I soldered the eight gauge wire to the top of the 60D nail. Um, in the video that I watched, the nail was five inches long. I couldn't find a five inch 60D nail, so I just went with six inches. But that is one side that I have wired together. The other side is the one that is connected directly to the base. Um, I didn't really understand why he had it that way. He didn't explain it, but because his looked a lot better than everybody else's and it was a lot more professional made. I went with what he did. And so I put it right there at the base. Ran the eight gauge wire the same exact way through the poly pipe all the way down to the 60D nail. Um, I'm sure that there is a lot of room for improvement on this. And I'm, I'm happy with the way it turns out. If you, go, if you go to my TikTok, you'll be able to see a lot of the stuff that that I've burned so far. And you might even catch me on a day where I'm actually burning stuff. Um, you could also go to a lot of my social media places, Facebook, Instagram, to see stuff like this as well. But I wanted to show you guys how I built this. And the future of my YouTubes is gonna be, of my YouTube videos is going to be of me showing the basic person how to do this. At one point in time, I didn't know how to do this, do specific stuff with woodworking, and I was so intrigued that I went to YouTube, but a lot of people don't go into the detail that needs to be there for somebody to understand the concept of it when it comes to pouring epoxy or fractal burning on the safety mechanisms, having a rubber mat down. You know, they're, they just get up there and they say, hey, um, or have a fire extinguisher. Or one thing I forgot to show you was the, was the safety pedal that I have. Um, you plug this, the power cord into this, and once you have this plugged in, then there, it's not live until you actually press the, the step. And I put it on the ground, and it, the reason why it's a safety mechanism is because if for some odd reason you do get shocked and you're stepping on this pedal, you're automatically going to jump up and it's going to turn off the electricity. So if you try to build one of these, make sure that you get a step. Um, 
a lot of spouses will have them laying around their house because if they were ever into sewing, sewing machines have them. So you might not have to go spend a lot of money. Altogether, I spent at most $100 to put all of this together. Um, there is also ones on Amazon that you could buy that have a lower wattage. I have shown videos of that on uh, TikTok as well. But on a future video, I'm gonna show you the differences of the wattage that goes through the Amazon ones and the reasons why I didn't really like it compared to this one right here. So stay tuned for that one. Um, but this is just the first video that I have on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please subscribe, um, like and share this video and go to my TikTok as well and Instagram. I also have a website that eventually all of this stuff is gonna be for sale on. Um, I am just a small time woodworker in Southwest Oklahoma and I enjoy doing this with my family. My wife, you'll see her behind the page or my son as well. I have other kids, they just don't wanna be part of it. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please like, follow and share. I hope you guys have a good night.